off, right? But the end result is you get branches that look authentic. And you get parts where you need them, right? Without having to do a whole lot of crazy stuff. Just cut, grow, cut, grow, cut, grow. Where necessary, encourage the plant to grow a certain way. But uh, especially early on, I find the less wire, the better. Because often, these trees get neglected next year, right? Because I have to work on these things and keep them looking good because these are more display worthy. These are works in progress. Sometimes they go months without me really paying much attention to them beyond giving them the water that they need. And then one day you look and that wire that you put on back in you know, November uh, is embedded in the branch and then all the work that you put into that branch is ruined. It's done, right? This way, I don't have to worry about doing damage or the part that actually may get damaged is going to get cut off anyway. All right? I'm going to do this. Why? Well, one, it makes the thing less cumbersome, right? So that every time I walk by it, I'm not banging into it. But it also takes away the apical buds on this branch, right? The terminal buds, I should say. The terminal buds on these branches. And you can see that they're bigger, right? There's, there's more packed into them because they are anticipated to take over, uh, you know, and continue the growth of the branch. Well, now they're gone. What does that mean? That means that other things have to fill in for them. I'm going to tip these back too, for the same reason. I'm redirecting the energy. I'm not taking all that away. I want to leave some of that because it'll help this not only fatten up, but help it set into this position. The more growth that's allowed to happen out this line, the sooner this will lignify into that position. Meaning when this gets cut, this doesn't move. Allow this to grow, that happens faster. And I can leave this on a year, two years, whatever I need. It's not hurting anything like that. And eventually cut back to something more inside. And by tipping it back like I've done, on all these other parts, what does that do? That makes this one more likely and this one more likely to receive the energy. They're going to grow better because these have been checked. Not killed, they're still coming out, but they've been checked. How about the, the yes? top? You again. I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The top straight one. Yeah, this. Yeah. Yes. Um, you don't want to do any kind of wiring or anything? No. Okay. Definitely not. Because I worry about doing damage. Right. Inadvertent okay. damage. Right? So, so I'd rather let this grow and then cut it back again next year. Probably cut this shorter and maybe go back to something that comes out down here. Okay. These are very likely to come out in addition to the other two sets because everything above it was taken away. This is a strong channel right gotcha. here. A lot of energy going this way. Now it has to express itself through what remains. Okay, so you want, it's a two-step. Yes. Well, in bonsai, you know, it's always uh, at least a two-step, and usually, you know, much more than that. Bonsai is always incremental, always. Uh, every now and again, you get to a nice place in your work where you can make a big stride forward and see real dramatic results. Every now and then, it's not like that typically. Typically, it's like, a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, a little bit next week, and eventually you get to where you want to be. Increments. So, looking at this, not sure about it either. It's got a certain amount of flexibility, but I cut it short, right? That's why I didn't want to cut that one short, so I'd have more leverage. Easier to bend if you're pulling from out here. When it's shortened like this, it's harder, but it's not impossible, so I'll throw a line on that too and bend it down. And again, this stop here I expect to be, uh, or I know it's going to die, so I'm not worried about damaging it with wire. I'm going to tie off to it. <coughs> Won't protect it with anything. Hopefully this will work. Might be a little bit too stubby. Do you ever uh, sketch any of your trees at a time, just you know, for planning's sake? I don't. I, you know, I have the ability to do that, Michael, and it's been advised to me to do it. Mr. Nakamura, who was my teacher in Japan, you know, he really utilized that. When I went to Kokufu with him, 
you know, he had obligations there, so he had to be there every day for two weeks. And I went with him, and partly to keep me occupied, but also because he recognized it would be a good, um, you know, a good exercise for me in looking, he had me go out and sketch trees that were on display. And, uh, you know, in order to draw something, you have to really look at it. And so I learned a lot doing that. And he then said, you know, that could be a tool for you when you're designing. And, of course, it's a big favorite for people doing workshops, right? He draws a picture of what their tree will look like in 10 years. And, uh, and they, you know, feel happy about that. And then they feel sad later on when it doesn't end up looking anything like that. <laughs> and that's the thing, too, Michael, at the heart of it. Um, when you do a sketch like that, you're imagining, right? You're projecting. This is what's going to happen in the future. This isn't here, but I think I can get it because there's a bud and whatnot. Well, it never goes the way that you anticipate. It never does. And it, it seems to me that there's some advantage in remaining flexible so that you're open to better possibilities that may present themselves. If I have a drawing telling me, this is what I'm aiming for, this is what my tree's going to be, and then the tree throws me something unexpected, and maybe at first blush it's a negative thing, like, oh man, why'd that happen? I needed that, you know, for my design. But then, if you're not married to that one idea, you could look at it more acceptingly, more uh, openly, and say, you know, maybe I can work with this, you know? Maybe I get something a little bit better than what I thought I was going to get, just because the tree threw me a curve and I responded to it. It's that dialogue again. If I'm drawing a picture, it's, it's, I'm getting dictatorial. I'm saying, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm aiming for, you know? If I don't get this, then somehow I fail. Now, I know that doesn't necessarily go hand in hand with the <coughs> picture, but you can think of it roughly that way. You're committing to a certain thing. And, uh, you know, I've been married for 30-something years now, so I don't have problem with commitment. <laughs> but when it comes to bonsai design, when it comes to art in general, I think holding off commitment as long as you can is advantageous because things happen, right? Other possibilities pop up. Some of them may be better than what you uh, originally thought. So this tree, right? I look at it now, and no doubt I see it much differently than you do. Maybe when you look at it, you see all kinds of things that are problematic. And certainly there are issues Right? That could be problems. Like, wow, well, what how does this work out? Right? That was a pretty dramatic cut. And then I went to something that was really close to the trunk and it didn't move away from the trunk and it kind of moved up almost uh, in parallel, you know, not exactly, but at a tight angle, and then starts arching. And how does this work out in the end? And the honest answer is I don't know. I don't know. But I'm not worried about it. I don't have to worry about that. Not now, anyway. Maybe someday. But you know what? Maybe someday this is the continuation of this branch line. Maybe this gets cut off and this becomes the continuation. I don't know. Maybe this dies back and actually hollows out a little bit. I don't know. Maybe I carve it, leave a little bit behind. Options. Options. I don't need to decide everything today. It's incremental. There's tomorrow. There's next year. There's a year after that. Whoa. How do you know you're going to be alive that long? You don't. So somebody else will work on it, you know? All, all it is, is creativity, right? You could be creative with this piece of drawing paper and a pen. If you have musical aptitude, you can be creative singing, right? You have all these different options in terms of expressing yourself. Presuming you have something that you feel needs expressing, and, and the desire to do it publicly, right? So, the act of creating involves taking a chance, right? Suppose you come looking for this tree next year and it dies because I did something wrong today. I just, don't worry about that. But it could happen that way, right? Then it's embarrassing, like, oh yeah, you were up there talking like you knew what you were doing and you killed the plant. So you're taking a chance. You, you create a design that's different from the, the run of the mill and you put it out on display and then you happen by when two critics are standing there saying, well, that's terrible, you know? I don't think that should even be in the show. <laughs> yeah. 
This is just part of the, the game. You put yourself out there. I'm creating something here. Maybe you'll like it. I hope you will. You know, that's always the best feeling. You put your tree out on display, and you walk by, and the two people who are looking at it are saying, isn't that great? Oh, man, I could just picture sitting under that tree on a hot day in the shade. And then that makes it feel great. My God, I've communicated with these people. I don't even know who they are, right? But I created something, and they responded to it, and that makes this circuit, you know? I, I communicate. That's part of this, that creative act. And challenging yourself. No, I don't have a step-by-step -step recipe, right? What happens next? I'm not sure. You know, I'm going to see. I'm going to see what the tree does. And that will help me d determine what comes next. A lot of folks don't feel comfortable working that way. They want a game plan, right? Give me the plan. Give me the recipe. I can cook the thing if you give me the step-by-step -step account of how to do it. If that's how you like to work, great. Great. But there's the possibility for other ways where you take a chance, you try something, you have an idea, you try to express it, it works, it doesn't, and gradually over time, one day you look in the mirror and it's like, oh, holy crap, I'm old, you know? <laughs> but look at my tree, you know? If you looked at this tree 10 years ago, it would have none of the effect it has right now, right? It didn't exist in this form. It was, it was just three, you know, stubby looking things in a pot. But through persistent effort, application, an idea, following it through, taking a chance, you end up with something that you can step back and look at and say, that's not too bad. You know, that looks kind of like what I was aiming for. You know?